Whoever would have thought we'd all wake up this morning with no idea who'll be running the country for the next three years. Prime Minister Julia Gillard or Prime Minister Tony Abbott, we're no closer to an answer than we were this time last week. It could be days, maybe even weeks before we have a decision. And it will almost certainly involve the goodwill of some very independent independents. Tara Brown and Charles Woolley report on this extraordinary deadlock. The Prime Minister of Australia, Julia Gillard. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. Tonight has been a win for the Australian people. In the wash-up of any election, the most obvious question is why. But the most important question following last night's result is who? Julia Gillard. Obviously, this is too close to call. Or Tony Abbott. We do not have a clear result from tonight. Tonight, and we're in political limbo. Every vote is important our Every first federal hung parliament continue. in 70 years. And to the Labor faithful... A devastating nation, blow for the Labor Party, the a return from the dead for the coalition. That the coalition is back in business. Good morning, Mr Abbott. How are you? I'm well, thanks. It was a courteous but quiet Tony Abbott queuing to vote yesterday morning. He left it up to his wife, Margie, to do the spruiking. You can I can ask you first who are you going to vote for. Uh, well, <laughs> now, can I have 30 seconds on that one, Tara? Uh, I'm voting for Tony Abbott. Vote one, Tony Abbott. <laughs> and the marathon man was hoping everyone was listening. Have you run hard enough? Uh, who knows? As I say, the Australian people decide he is a strong man. He's a man of conviction. And um, I think he has given... Hi, how are you? Very good, how are you? Good, it's Gillard. Yeah. <laughs> In Victoria, the Prime Minister was preparing to make her mark, knowing that the polls painfully close, every vote counted. Let's get a picture of where things are at right now. No one knew how close until counting started. You lose billions of dollars with your massive incompetence and you ask us to re-elect you. No wonder they whacked you in the face, son. And the night continued to be brutal for the ALP. Queensland was a massacre. And in New South Wales, the first to feel the pain was Labor's star recruit, Maxine McHugh, who three years ago slayed Prime Minister John Howard in the blue ribbon seat of Benelong. The Liberals took 49.1% of the primary vote. Maxine McHugh only has 36.9%, so even Green preferences won't save her. They're a big swing. This is a, a hard night for the Labor Party. While Maxine was a big loser... And doesn't he look happy? He does. The big winner was the Green Party, taking their first ever lower house seat. We have made history today! A huge national swing and balance of power in the Senate. As Charles Woolley discovered today, green is now everyone's favourite colour, especially Julia Gillard's. How are you? I'm oh, good. Thank you very much. Right. Charles was waiting in Melbourne for an interview with Greens leader Bob Brown when who should arrive? I'm just about to interview him over there. We could do it. A <laughs> I'll let you do that. Thank you. Bob Brown, who's going to rule Australia? Well, uh, that's really in the ballot box, so uh, the will of the people is still coming out. I, on the council I can see it's potential for Labor to get 75. You need one more to rule the House, and there's a potential for the Coalition to get 75. But whether it's Julia Gillard or Tony Abbott, they've got to now start negotiating with people outside their own team. It's a very healthy exercise. Do you think there's a chance we'll all be back to the polls within a year? Uh, a bit of wisdom and experience will make sure we won't be going back to the polls until three years is up. Julia! Hello, Mark. Long time How are you? The recriminations for the Labor Party have already begun, with some even blaming this man, former ALP leader and recent 60 Minutes guest reporter Mark Lakin. Are oh, you brave enough to shake my hand? I'm happy to shake your hand, Mark. <laughs> he made a name for himself in this campaign by revealing some party tricks on both sides and urging an unhappy electorate to lodge a protest vote, which many did yesterday. I say let's give them a blank piece of paper in return. Uh, the underlying story of the campaign is one of disillusionment and disengagement. So many people said this is a campaign about nothing, doesn't really matter, 
and they only went and voted because the, the, the government compels them to do so with threats of fines and possible court action. So the informal vote wasn't because you told everyone to vote that way? Oh no, I mean people um, were cheesed off with this election well before 60 Minutes, a powerful program and not a bad segment, but realistically people make up their own mind and, and, and they vote from what they see. They, they see a Labor Party that says climate change is a big issue and does nothing. I see a Liberal Party that says industrial relations reform is important and then walks away from it, seemingly, and they think the whole thing's a sham. I think, I think we've just won. For the past five weeks, both parties have been trying to win the hearts and minds of the voters. If I could just thank all of you. Desperately, they're now courting up to five independents, including Tony Windsor, who get to decide who will govern. Why do you think the independents and the Greens did so well during this election? Well, I think there's a number of factors there. The major parties this campaign, it was the worst campaign I've ever seen. Uh, I think they were caught out misrepresenting what they actually believed in. While counting is still going on in crucial seats, that didn't stop either leader from calling Tony Windsor late last night. Did you feel like you were being wooed? Oh, it was very touching. <laughs> very, very touching. It must be hard to deal with hypocrites, or is that just political pragmatism? <laughs> yeah, well, I guess we're all hypocrites for, uh, from time to time, but uh, I, I, I don't think I've seen an election such as this one uh, where the hypocrisy has been uh, so much on display. Uh, but the people have had their say. They haven't decided on a government at the moment. Uh, and if it's a hung parliament, I'm quite happy to have my say in relation to how we play out the issues. I said earlier, this is an election that hasn't finished. Before any deal is done with the independents, the big parties have to work out their own numbers and their final seats. Labor's not going to burn off two leaders. For Channel 9 political commentator Laurie Oakes, it's a difficult call, but one he's prepared to make. Who's the most likely to be able to form a minority government and when do you expect that to happen? <laughs> well, look, it depends on, on who wins those doubtful seats. Um, my feeling is that, that Labor will probably end up maybe with, with one seat more than the coalition, or something like that, in which case it will probably get first go at trying to form a, uh, uh, a minority government. It wasn't meant to be a victory march, but Tony Abbott certainly walked the walk of a Prime Minister last night, no one believing he could come this close. To get this far has been an exceptional result for Tony Abbott, who, when he took over the leadership, even amongst the Liberal Party friends, was considered unelectable. It's been neck and neck all night. Victory never far away, but also never certain. But for the party diehards here, Tony Abbott has made political history. He's a reason for the Liberal Party to party. And what sort of Prime Minister do you think he could make? <laughs> well. Yeah, you know, my answer now would be different from what it would have been a few months ago. I mean, Tony Abbott has always been known for, for self-indulgence, lack of discipline, too much aggression. Not, not exactly the kind of person you want as Prime Minister. But in the election campaign, he conquered all that. Now, if he could continue that, uh, then he might not be a bad Prime Minister at all. As Charlie found out, in contrast to Tony Abbott, the mood for our caretaker Prime Minister was more sombre, the crowd more subdued. Sure, there's a round of applause, but really, I mean, look at it, the place is half empty. This is not the historical night that the Labor Party had planned, the night that would see Julia Gillard enshrined as Australia's first female Prime Minister in her own right. It's historical, all right, but not in the way the Labor Party had planned. If Julia Gillard can form a minority government, does that ensure her survival as the leader of the ALP? Oh, I wouldn't have thought so. It's a, it's a big loss of seats. Uh, she's lost net 16 electorates, um, which is a devastating blow. And as soon as they can find someone who's more appealing and successful in their polling, uh, they'll put that person in what's become the revolving door of Labor leadership. Mm -hmm. Does anyone stand out? I mean, oh, not really. I suppose Wayne Swine will say he's a safe pair of hands and would offer stability and continuity. Um, most voters would just yawn. 
That was maximum degree of difficulty for you, wasn't it? Whether it's the rug factor, a bored electorate, or a loss of faith in both parties, voters have spoken. Australia is one of the strongest democracies in the world. We won't know the result for at least a week or so. Uh, the important thing is that Australia now has competent and stable government. But Laurie Oakes reckons neither years. leader has grown in stature. Do you still believe both leaders are political pygmies? Oh yeah, look, I certainly do. This, this was a campaign with no big ideas. It was all about a little Australia. It was a campaign without ambition at all. And uh, I, I think that's one of the things that disappointed Australians. I, I think they, they, they didn't see any leadership at all. They didn't see any inspiration. And uh, that, that's why neither party won, really. Hello, I'm Amelia Adams. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for our brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.